Welcome back. Today's video we're going to learn about key paths, mostly known to us as start backslash notation in Swift UI, and we want to understand why they are heavily used in Swift UI. Now let's start by understanding key paths. For that I created a basic playground project where we can do some experiments. And first of all you should know that key paths are not Swift UI specific. They were introduced with Swift 4 and are completely independent of Swift UI. But what they allow us is to basically refer to a property itself rather than to the value of a specific property. Now what do I mean by this? Let's say we have this struct called person. And we may have some name of type string and some variable age of type integer. Now let's also say we have an array called people and it is going to contain a few persons. Now assume we want to be able to access the name of all of these persons. Now there are many ways to do it. One way to do it is we could declare something like let all names be equal to people and then use the map function and then dollar zero would represent each of these uh, person and then we want their name and when we do that we get an array of strings which contain Alice and Bob and to show you that I will just print it out as you can see we get the array with Alice and Bob however when we do this we are actually already accessing the value. But what key paths basically allow us is to not directly access it, but it allows us to remember the path to the name or the age rather than directly accessing their values. So let me show you how to define a key path. Now let's say we want to define a key path for the name. The way we do that is by simply saying name key path is going to be equal to backslash person dot name and if you look at the type of this you will see it is a key path of a person and the value is of type string so we're pointing to the name so it should be string if it was at the h you would see integer here now if this type was already given we could also use a shorthand notation and you will see that in swift ui a lot that we do not write person dot something but instead just dot name and obviously if you remove this Xcode will complain however in Swift UI when you have something like a for each loop Swift UI automatically knows all right you're iterating over a person you so if you use the key pair notation you're probably talking about the person now uh, one last thing I would like to show you before we go back to the um, Swift UI project how do we apply this name key path to the person now one way you could do that is by doing something like this for person and people you could do something like a print statement in here and then say uh, take the person and this kind of looks like an array notation but remember this is not an array but what we can do here is pass a key path and we can pass in the name key path in here and if we run this you will see it will print out Alice and Bob. So just remember this key path notation just allows us to have a path to a specific property without actually accessing the value directly. So you can kind of think of it like a map pointing to a specific property. Now let's go back to our Swift UI project and figure out why we need them a lot in Swift UI. Now let's do a basic example here again. I will just paste in the struct we had before and also the uh, array of people that we had inside of the content view like so. And let's say we have a list in our body, also a for each. And what we're gonna do is for each uh, person in the people array, we want to, so we get the person in here and our row is going to be uh, text view with the person dot name. Now Xcode will complain because um, whenever we use a for each, we have to make sure that the person is uniquely identifiable. And the reason why Swift UI requires that person conforms to identifiable is because of the way how Swift UI works internally. It wants to be able to efficiently tell 
what changed. So it does not have to update the whole view tree, but rather the thing that just changed. And by making person identifiable, we're basically uh, assuring SwiftUI that each of them are unique. So do not worry. You can uniquely identify them and efficiently update the view tree. So let's do this. And in order to conform to the identifiable protocol, you have to have some ID. We can uh, initialize it in here like so. And then if you resume, it would be totally fine with that, as you can see right here. However, sometimes you see a different approach. People do not use identifiable and ID, but they rather use um, something called a self key path. So what they do is they give this for each also something to identify and they pass it in as the ID parameter and they use this um, key path notation and say self. So by saying uh, backslash dot self, you're basically telling Swift UI by this that it can uniquely identify two person. So even if you had something like Alice H22 and then you would copy this, you're guaranteeing that they are still uniquely identifiable. However, this is obviously not the case yet because in order to do that, you have to make sure that a person can be hashed so it has to conform to the hashable and here we do not have to implement anything because for the basic types like string and integer we get the hashing for free so this is automatically hashed so uh, SwiftUI can easily distinguish between this person and this person although they have the same name and age which is pretty nice However, there's also another way. Let's say you have some uh, person with some member card ID or something like this. And it's some unique UUID. You could also say just ad identify the person by the member ID. So what you can do is say dot member ID. And SwiftUI would also be fine with that. Notice. Um, as I mentioned earlier, SwiftUI is able to infer the type, so you do not have to type uh, person.member ID. It is just enough to write dot member ID. All right, that is all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope this made KeyPass more clear to you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.